In this video, we're going to go over the pros and cons of the node voltage technique versus the mesh current technique and how you might decide which one you want to use. First things first, you want to look at how many nodes there are and how many mesh currents there are. Remember that if you use node voltage technique, then the number of variables is equal to the number of nodes minus one. It's always minus one because one becomes ground when you set to zero. On the other hand, the mesh current technique, the number of variables is just equal to the number of mesh currents. Now notice I'm ignoring the whole dependent source extra equations because that's the same no matter which technique you use. So if you have a problem here with like a lot of nodes but only a few meshes, you probably want to use mesh current. If you have only a few nodes and a lot of meshes, you probably want to use node voltage. So it's a very good idea to look at this, see how many equations you're looking at, and that right there can decide how complicated one of them is going to be. On the other hand, what if you get the same number of variables with these? What are you going to do next? Well, look at where your sources are located. For example, let's say you had a node voltage problem here. And you had, you know, a whole bunch of voltage sources, but they were all attached to one fixed node. Well, because you can pick the bottom to be ground, you immediately get to find out what these other nodes are going to be, and it saves you a whole bunch of time. So if you have a lot of voltage sources attached to a single node, that's a good thing to use node voltage. On the other hand, if you have a lot of sources that are in between different pairs of nodes, well, then maybe you'd have to use super nodes, which might make things more complicated. Similarly, if you're doing mesh current and you have current sources that are all by themselves with no separate mesh loop between them, well, in this case, it's really easy. Whatever your, your I1 is going to be the same as your, your current source there, and your I2 will just be the opposite of that current source. So when you have current sources on their own, Mesh loop analysis is really great. However, if you had a current source in between two mesh loops, well, then you have to do a super loop. So again, it's just decisions are up to you which one you want to do, but these are things you want to think about when making a decision. Uh, next question, which to me, it's maybe not that important, but can save you a little bit of time. What are you being asked to find in the circuit? If you're being asked to find a current in some part, then it might be a good idea to use mesh current because the variables you're solving for are the same as the thing you're looking at for. Whereas if you're asked to find a voltage, you'd have to do an extra Ohm's law or something at the end to find that. Now again, doing an extra Ohm's law doesn't take that much time, but it's still something you could ask yourself whether it's worth using node voltage or mesh current given the situation. And the last question, which is going to be pretty important for most of you, especially as you're first learning these techniques, is which method are you most comfortable with? I've definitely had students that get really, really, really comfortable with only one method, and they pretty much use it always. Now, that's not wrong. You can still get the right answer doing all that. But sometimes you'll end up taking a lot more effort to solve a problem than if you were able to freely switch between the two methods. So I definitely recommend learn both techniques and learn them well so that you can use whichever one is the most appropriate for a given problem. I do remember an exam question I gave once where if you used one technique, you had three equations and three variables. And if you used the other one, you would have had seven equations, seven variables. And obviously one would be a lot easier than the other there. 